making sure that everybody is muted as you are coming in. You well know that we have two muters and I still ask you to be responsible for yourselves and try to keep yourselves muted. A, this is one of two sessions that are connected to the poetry of Elias Cohen. Just that today and more than that about his activities in the creation of the literary magazine and much more, Mashiv Haruach, next week. So get ready for a treat. I'm sure you will love it. Let me put the screen, a, the PowerPoint on the screen so we can get this on the way as we normally do. So here is the PowerPoint presentation that we are going to use today. And what does it tell you before I even go into the poetry? It tells you a couple of things that you may, you may be interested in paying attention to. It shows you that there is a book of poems by Elias Cohen available in English. That is not always the case, but it is the case today. It shows you the picture of the cover page of the latest book of uh, Elias Cohen published during these years of the pandemic, not yet translated into English, but one poem we are doing today. It shows you Kfaretzion, where Elias, Efrat, and their children live, and it shows you the list of the poems we are planning to address today, tonight, wherever you are in the world. When we start a session, we will be a mess if we will not properly mention our sponsors. So a word was said already about Ari Katz, who is the creator and the father, maybe also the mother of CSP, the Community Speakers Program from Orange County, Southern California. Ari is a friend. Ari is sponsoring both Elias related sessions. Will you come in and say a word to everybody and especially to the people you invited and maybe something about upcoming programs because we are doing this today in partnership with CSP. I'm happy to. In fact, we couldn't have selected a more appropriate time because it is almost exactly a year, if not a year to the day that um, we in the United States um, had to go in to dealing with the fact that we had a pandemic and we at CSP, I, I just chatted to everybody, our, our website, www.occsp.net. We at CSP went online and um, we had never offered a program online before. I reached out to Rachel. She said she had an idea about this poetry group. She wanted to start online for Israeli poetry. The rest is history. Rachel has gone on to do amazing incredible programming online but with a far reach to people all over the over the world and CSP as well. Um, this is our 208th program that we've hosted or sponsored online since last year, this date. Remember, we went from zero to that and we have gone from an Orange County based educational nonprofit to an international nonprofit focused on adult education and bringing the best thinkers and writers and poets and artists in the world to Orange County. So. I want to, to thank Rachel and recognize this very important date, the year date, the an, the anniversary, and know that the world has forever changed. In that we will never, we will have live programs. I'm sure Rachel will will want to travel and meet you all live, but we will forever. I think I I will, and I hope Rachel will continue to teach online because we can reach so many people and we can have an international audience. So I want to thank CSP and all of our donors and supporters. I want to invite you all to come to CSP. Um, Rachel has given us great ideas over the years as to poets and writers we should bring. So we're very happy in May. Um, I think it's May 5th. We're going to have uh, CSP's going to have Rachel interview Mayor Shalev about his writing. We are going to have Asaf Gavron in April. And um, uh, Rachel has done amazing work, as you know, bringing artists, uh, musical artists to um, help them from Israel. And she introduced me to Asaf, uh, who's on uh, the program as well. And we're having a big program, April 11th, a musical event in honor of Rachel. So we invite you all to join us. Uh, no no okay. charge. Okay, and As you can see, Ari, because I woke up this morning to the possibility that maybe you will not be here and God forbid I should forget any of your activities. I put it on the screen for everybody to see so you can see. Also, next to your 
and your people's generous sponsorship of the sessions. We have additional sponsors who are sponsoring our musician today, Ari Gorali. And among them are Gila Appleby, Martha Hauptman, and Elizabeth Pressman. And Elizabeth, I think it was you who sent me this picture. I, I'm not sure I remember, but I think it was you. And even if it was somebody else, thank you for the picture, remembering that although here in Israel we can already start going to the beach, some of you are still on the snow. And Ari Gorali, a special musician, uh, chosen to be with us today by Elias Cohen. And together they have chosen a two of a Ariel a, of Elias's poems that a Ari had set to music. So let me start by reading you the first. We are not really, really studying it, but just I want you to know what is the beautiful poem that Ari Gorali had set into music for us. So since it was not sent out to our readers uh, in the source sheets, I'm going to ask Elias to read the Ivrit from us, for us, and then I will do the English just to make it easier. Elias, will you read Achshavani Chole Ahava for us? Okay, thank you. Achshavani Chole Meod Ba'ava. שהיא געגועים. כל הגוף נמלא בכאבים של מיתרים המבקשים להיפרט. עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה, לא רק איבר האהבה, שהוא הלב. הוא צף דם ענבי תשוקה עד להתפקע, גרורות פושטות בכל כסריגים, רוצות לבוא בגן נעול. עכשיו אני Thank you. Now I'm very sick with love, which is longing. The entire body feels with the pain of strings asking to be strummed. Now I'm very sick with love. Not only the love organ, which is the heart, is flooded to bursting with the blood of the grapes of lust. Cancerous growth are spreading everywhere like tendrils, desiring to come into the locked garden. Now I'm sick with love. I trust most of you can easily recognize the biblical reference, but why don't I, as usual, first of all, point the important word to me in this poem as I was reading it, and that is the word achshav, now. This is not a nostalgic remembrance of love. This is not a future longing. This is not Rachel telling us about a non-existent love and Leah Goldberg in pain about something that will never happen. This is now, and it's happening and it's as contemporary as one could get, but also, as always, it is connected to something that where our roots come from. So we are opening the Song of Songs, Shir Shirim, Perakei, chapter five, and we are reading, Hishbati etchem benot Yerushalayim, im timtsewu et dodi, ma tagidu lo, shecholat ahava ani. I adjourn you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him that I am lovesick? I love the reversal. You took the role of the woman in Shira Shirim. I love the contemporary. I love the reversal. I love the root. And I am sure we will love the music. So, <laughs> Ari Gorali, it's up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you that when we have the music, please keep yourself muted and I will be doing the same. Ari, are you ready for us? Please unmute. We will not be able to hear you if you are muted. Doesn't work that way. Now you can hear me? Sure, go ahead. Okay. 
עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה שהיא געגועי כל הגוף נמלא בכאבים של מיתרים המבקשים להיפרד עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה לא רק איבר האהבה שהוא הלב מוצף בדם מנווה תשוקה עד להתפקע גרורות פושטות בקול כסר עיגים רוצות לבוא בגן ההוא. עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה שהיא געגועים. כל הגוף נמלא בכאבים של מיתרים המבקשים להיפרד עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה לא רק איבר האהבה שהוא הלב מוצף בדם מנווה תשוקה עד להתפקע גרורות פושטות בקול כסר עיגים רוצות לעבור בגן ההוא עכשיו אני חולה מאוד באהבה עכשיו אני חולה מאוד. תודה רבה רבה ארי. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. ארי, אני מאוד 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 You check the chat because people will be telling you in the chat how they feel about your music and you may even enjoy that, you know? <laughs> so, why don't we do it as we are going back to my PowerPoint because we gathered here for the purpose of reading poetry and reading poetry is what we will do. So... Let me go back and I want to show you something that I don't think you have seen a lot in my sessions. And that is an empty slide. I created it for myself. So I remember to take a deep breath from the poem song of being sick with love into where I want to lead you in the study of a Eliezer's poetry that has many facets. And this one is going to be so different that we needed a moment to take a break. Quite a few years ago, I do not know how many, I started working on an educational program that I called Zot Hashira. This is the poetry, these are the verses. And it is an educational program to teach about the history of the State of Israel through poetry. I'm not talking to you about that now. I'm talking to you about me. And when I came to the time, 
that I had to deal with the disengagement. That part in our history in 2005 pretty well advanced. And I am doing the history of Israel not as a historian. I am doing it through the poetic lens. This is when I come across in my research Mashiv Haruach for the first time. This Elias was my first encounter online. And I see the special edition. I know it's not the first, but it was my first. And it was my meeting with you. And the title in Hebrew says, and I will translate as we go, and you can see in the middle. Mashiv Haruach, it's both that prayer that we pray for wind and rain in proper season. It's also the expression about Lehashiv Ruach, to bring back the spirit, to bring back life. And this is a particular addition, particular issue about the disengagement. And it has a subtitle, a special edition, Al Da'at Hazman Ve'amakum, upon the permission of time and place, but please remember that makom in Hebrew is also another appellation of the divine, which immediately threw me back to the beginning of Kol Nidre, when before we start that amazing day of Yom Kippur, we ask permission, we declare permission for what is to come. So before I even know Eliezer's poetry, I know about the ground he stands on, the way he uses language, which by allusions of a subtitle says, you are gonna think about Yom Kippur now. It is not Yom Kippur. And yet I want you to think about Yom Kippur. And what we will discover now is what does it mean to think about Yom Kippur when you are facing the disengagement, the phase when the government of Israel is ordering Jewish settlers to move out of the homes they created from themselves for the sake of a hope for free peace, unfortunately never materialized. And in that edition, I find the poem, Invitation to Cry. We will talk about it, don't worry. But before we do, I want to ask you, Elias, to just read it through for us. So we hear the Ivrit. I will ask you, Stuart, to do the English. I hope you will be ready. And only then we will start talking about it. Bevakasha, Elias, please. Remember to unmute. Hazmana levech. Elecha, hachayal, hatov, haneeman, shebiyom in ayamim, hu yom pkuda, tikrav li meoneinu. Arutz alecha, bizrot ptuchot, arutz. Achavekha, Zubilcha, Nea Petach, Ochaz Kavaunta, Ekra Becha Kriya, Ad Mekom Halev, Tikanes, Teshevi Manu Bishivata Avelin, Titama Keachima Agulin, Kemo Ayeladin, Shegamachav, Mitgalgelim, Alashatiach, Kemo Goal, Shuv, Ofhim Batim Beetzion, Bin Kuvim, וחלולים, בדממה, נלך בעבר האחרונה, ולכן אני אמרתי, תביאי לי, תביא את הטלפון, אני רוצה לשמוע אותה. It is hard for the muters to chase you. I'm begging every single one of you. I don't want to mute you in such a way that you cannot unmute yourself. But I will have to do it if this happens again. Please keep yourself muted. Please, everybody.
just a minute, uh, Elias, we are going back to the text. Yeah. Please unmute yourself because I muted you. Okay, so uh, to, to repeat it, because it's, we are in the middle of the Shiva. The, the... Yeah, middle of the Shir, let's do the rest of the Shir in Hebrew. Okay. Tikanes. תשב עמנו בישיבת האבלים, תיתם הכאחים העגולים, כמו הילדים שגם עכשיו מתגלגלים על השטיח כמו גורל, שוב הופכים בתים בעציון, לנקובים וחלולים. בדממה נלך באחרונה בין חדרי הבית. רק אני ואת והכתלים זוכרים ריבים ואהבים, שורות שנכתבו, שנמחקו, כמו נכבות. בספר החיים. בעיניך, חיילי הטוב, אראה דמעה. ראינו חונקים את בכיים, כתב בית השח המשורר, עכשיו אולי מותר לבכות. ואם היה עוד זמן, היינו רובצים בנעוד דשא ושוב משחקים במשחק המחבואים של שיר השירים. את הראיה, אני הדוד. אתה בתפקיד השומרים. והייתי בריצה לוקח אותך מעל לבית הקברות, לכאן, בשעת רעבה דרעבין אחת, שמעתי תפיללת המואזין כי תפילת יהודאין יחד עולות. כאן אפשר להתנבא, כאן, אם רק היה לנו עוד זמן, בלחישת השואל, ארזתם? כאילו יש בזה העולם הצרור שכה יכיל געגועים. אתה עוצר בשטף הדמעות. יוצאים לנשום על המרפסת. כאן הכנתי לי פינה קטנה לכתוב את הרומן הלא גמור. עכשיו, מעץ התאנה שבחצר, עלי אחרון נושר. הכל מלא סמלים, אתה אומר, נופל על צווארי, בבכי וממרר. חיילי הנאמן, הטוב, עכשיו מותר סוף סוף לבכות. Thank you so much, Elias. Stuart, we are expecting you to lead us through the English translation. An invitation to cry. To you, the good loyal soldier, who on that day of the order will approach our dwelling, I will run to you with open arms. I will run, I will embrace you and lead you in front of the entrance. I will take hold of your collar. I will tear it to the place where your heart is. Enter, sit with us, the mourners. Taste the round pretzels like the children who even now are tumbling on the rug like fate. Again, houses in Etzion are turning pocked and hollow. Silently, we will all walk at the end through the rooms of the house. Only I and you and my wife and walls remember the quarrels and loving, lines that were written and erased as though burned into a book of life. In your eyes, my good soldier, I will see a tear. Our friends stifle their crying, wrote the poem in 1948. Perhaps now it is permitted to cry And if there were more time, we would lie down in green pastures and play again, the hide and seek game of the song of songs. You as my love, I as the beloved, and you, soldier in the role of watchman. And I take you running above the cemetery here in the hour of great favor. I heard Allah of the Muzen, as though rising together with the praying, of Yehuda in. Here one can prophesy, here, if only we had more time. In a whisper you ask, have you packed, as though there were in this world a bundle which can contain yearning? You hold back a stream of tears. We go out for a breath of air on the porch. Here I prepared a little corner to write the unfinished novel, now from the fig tree in the yard, The last leaf falls. Everything is filled with symbols, you say. 
you fall on my neck weeping bitterly. My good, loyal soldier, now at last it is permitted to cry. Thank you so much, Stuart, for this beautiful reading. Those of you who have been with me for a length of time, a certain length of time, may remember when immediately after the High Holidays, we started with Bialik. And we started with the poem to the bird, Elatsipor. And I told you, before we are looking at the content, I need you to look at the date at the bottom of the poem. And the date was Nisan, Tafresh Ein Aleph. And I told you the Nisan was important because it was spring and migrating birds and Pesach. And now I'm imploring you to do the same. Go to the bottom with daytime anxiety, Shvat, Kfar Etzion, 2005. Actually, the Hebrew says 2004. I think it should be for maybe the English edition. It was later. What is happening? We need to do a tour de force because I mentioned the disengagement to you. I even give you a, a picture of frying soldiers from the disengagement but the disengagement does not happen in the Gush. It is in the Gaza Strip. So I want to transplant you, if you wish, to the time, 16 years ago. And I want you to understand that distance, that, that terrible thing of having to dismantle, to uproot people who went in good faith to start new places in the call of Israeli governments are now needing to uproot. They are literally mourning. But why is the poet, the narrator voice in this poem, transplanting the story to his own dwelling in Gush Etzion? The answer is in that bottom line, anxiety, fear. If it could happen there, might it ever happen to us in Gush Etzion as well? We are reading a, a, a reverie of anxiety. God forbid, I understand the pain over there, but I want already to visualize had it has happened here to me. And then we read the development of this nightmare, dream. When it happens, what will it look like? No, it will not be strong troops. It will be a soldier that I can hug. It will be a person just like me. It's not the enemy. It's a brother. Could be my son, could be my neighbor's son. And he will come and I will invite him together to perform the act of mourning, tearing your dress near the heart. Come join, sit like the Shiva, to sit Shiva, this is the verb we use. Look at the kids, look at our houses, look at what is happening. We could go outside, we could enjoy the view, Look at the reference to the fact and whatever one may think about your ideas about settlers. Listen now to the honest voice of Elias who says, I live in this place in the vicinity of Arabs and our prayers go up together. I hear them as I hear mine. It's not a separate spiritual world. It's united. Had we had the time we would do some more. Then comes the question, are you packed? As if one could pack longing. And then the last leaf falling, and then the last crying, and then the permission to cry. Now, why would one want a permission to cry? So let me now take you into that two levels. I actually have two different slides to look at two 
worlds of references playing around in this poem. So bear with me until I make the PowerPoint work my way. The first expression we want to look at is Yom Pekuda. This will all happen in the day of the order. And we are looking to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 3. Umata asuli yom pekuda. And what will you do in the day of visitation? But look at the rest of the verse in the Hebrew. Ule shoami merchak tavo. I don't think any of us normally remembers anymore that the word Shoah was not invented in 1945. That is a part of our vocabulary from before. And the reference is extremely important. So Elias is using the term of the day of visitation, the day of order by linking us, making an allusion to a verse that brings the notion of disaster of Shoah. Let us look at another illusion. We would lie down in green pastures, etc., playing around the hide and seek of, a, of course, Tehillim Psalms. So we are looking at chapter 23, and we have the Neot Deshe, the pastures here in the poem. So making a quote from Psalms, a reference to the Song of Songs. We are totally versed here from a, our sources from time immemorial. The poem itself appears in an issue of a Mashiva Ruach that is connected in our mind to the prayers of Yom Kippur. And the poem itself is versed in biblical text. So this is one level of illusion. I'd like you to keep it in your mind. I promise you I'll be coming back to it. But now I'm putting on my second slide so that we can go into another world of reference. My invitation to you will be not to cry. My invitation to you will be to look at the text that we are dealing with as being totally versed in classical Jewish text and at the same time in contemporary Israeli lore. So we are starting from the top, Hazmana Lebechi, an invitation to cry. Uh -huh. If the PowerPoint was responding to me the way I wanted to, it would be nice. So first of all, we have Hazmana Lebechi. We want you to notice, whoa, I don't have it in the English. Of course I do. Invitation to cry. This will be one of the reference. I'm just showing you markers of references that I will want to take you to. Fate again houses in Gush Etzion again are ruined, are hollowed, etc. What is the again? What is the reference to? The third one. In your eyes, my good soldier, I see a tear. Our friends stifle their crying. What is this? What is the reference to? What poem from 1948 is Elias referencing? We are not done. Oh, sorry. And now please look at the bottom. Now at last it is permitted to cry. So we are looking at these four contemporary, contemporary as from the beginning of the state, references, and we will follow Elias as he unveils them, includes them in his text, and what is the message to Israelis. In order, and others, in order to do that, you are used to me doing timelines. 
but I don't think I ever did a timeline for you that is a timeline for one poem. I normally give you the poet's life timeline. I give you a period. I will show you how Oritzvi Grimberg relates to Bialik and Alterman. This time we are doing a timeline for one poem. So let us try, start, and I hope you will like it. We will start by when our poet is born. The year is 1972. He was born in Petah Tikva. I gave you a little picture that it connects to a famous poem about Petah Tikva, but we are not going there. Suffice it to say, if you want the connections and the symbolism, that this is considered to be the first Moshava, the first colony, the beginning of hope, the new settlement of Eretz Israel as of the modern Zionist waves. His family in 1979 moves to Elkanah, which is a settlement, is a yeshuv in Samaria. I'm very careful with my language because I could say the occupied territories, I could say the West Bank, but I am being true to the spirit of the poem and I will say Shomron. And if you want to ask me why is the reference so important? Why is it important for me not to say the West Bank? Why is it important to me not to say the occupied territories, but keep it on the traditional name of Shomron? Later in life, in 1995, Elias and Efrat get married and move to live in Kfar Etzion, which is a kibbutz. That belongs to a group of Jewish settlements, kibbutzim, etc., that existed south of Jerusalem, south of Bethlehem, prior to 48. So let us look at that earlier history. I'd like to mention 1945 because it is connected to our story. When the ghetto fighters arrived to Israel, and Abba Kovner, a famous one of them, relates to Alterman, an event that happened upon liberation in Vilna, to which Alterman will compose the poem, Mom, is it allowed, is it permitted to cry, to weep now? So you are starting to see the literary references. In 1948, a group of people, 35 in number, the Lamed Hay, are trying to rescue those four Jewish kibbutzim south of Yerushalayim that are surrounded by Arab forces. But they try to bring ammunition and food and medication. They fail. The picture I gave you is the image of the Battle Hill where failing to reach the Gush in time, they fought until the last of them died. Chaim Gori, a poet that we studied about six weeks ago, wrote an amazing poem, Behold Our Bodies, about that. In that, the line that we are talking about is mentioned. We'll come to that in a moment. In May of 1948, on the eve before the state is declared, the gush, these settlements fall, and therefore the houses are ruined in Gush Etzion, the very same place where Elias lives today. And I know that he has personal relatives who have been in the gush since the early years. In 1967, we are facing the fact that people, mainly children, descendants of the original people who lived in the Gush are returning. The picture I gave you is again a symbolic one, is a tree that you could see even during the 19 years when the Gush was not in Israeli hands. And this was, I would say, the image of longing and wanting to go back. Then comes 1973, the Yom Kippur War. How is it connected? Yom Kippur already gave you a hint. I gave you a picture of one of the kibbutzim that had lost 11 
of their sons in the Yom Kippur War to symbolize the shock that Israeli society is going through and under in the Yom Kippur War. Depression, especially coming after the euphoria of 67. It is around, and now let us go to 90, 2005, the disengagement. I gave you a picture again, symbolic of the disengagement of the weeping of girls praying for it not to happen. It is at this point that Elias is writing his poem, Invitation to Cry. But he is picking up the name of a text written in 1974, immediately after the Yom Kippur War, by a person called Arnon Lapid, who writes a poem, a text that will later be turned into a poem about asking permission to cry. Elias freely, symbolically, makes the connection not only to the permission to cry, but to the Yom Kippur events, the war of Yom Kippur, and its impact on Israeli society. He also references, behold our bodies with Chaim Guri, talking about the soldiers who needed to hold back their tears. And there is in the backdrop, the famous Altam poem, following the Holocaust. Remember that we had a very slight Holocaust reference in the biblical quote, the Shoah. And so we have that. Look at the whole as you see it now. And this is a study in an Israeli issue. Are we allowed to cry? Can Israelis give their feelings the full expression of tears and crying? Do we, like the child survivor, need to ask our mothers for a permission to cry? Do soldiers need to stifle their tears when they lose their friends? Does Arnon Lapid in 74 needs to write a text asking for permission to cry after the trauma? And Elias looking back at his predecessors and saying his word with us. Here is, I had your picture, Elias looking at the Arnon Lapid text. And since it is not in the text I've sent everybody, I'm not reading the whole Arnon Lapid text because he is not our focus, just a little bit. I want to send you an invitation to weep. The day and the hour are not important, but the evening plan, I promise, will be rich weeping. We will weep for hours. We will weep over my dad. Avraimele, Ilan, Amitai, Dudu, Ozer, Yair, and my son. And you will weep over yours. And together we will weep for dreams we had awoken from. For the gods that have let us down. We will weep for a new bereaved. Oh, how much we will weep. A wailing weep we will weep. A ear-breaking ear weep, a huge weep, a psychedelic weep. We will weep full benches, we will weep rivers, we will weep oceans, etc., etc. There will be a day maybe that we will study together the text of Arnon Lapid in context of the Yom Kippur War. What I need for you to know that although it arose among many, understanding and sympathy, there were people who thought that this was a sign of weakness, that he should not have written this. Hannah Zemmer, the editor-in-chief of, of the VAR, the daily paper of the labor movement, said that she is totally not accepting the invitation. And how dare he? Hanan Porat, one of the creators of the settlement movement, said, 
this we people maybe understand that we are losing our spirit and we need to do something. So when Elias, from his point of view, being a settler, is going back to this and says, no, I am taking the invitation to cry and I'm repeating it. That takes some courage. Let me just show you. This is 1974, Arnon Lapid. And here is the poem of Chaim Guri that we have studied together. I just wanted to remind you that is about the 35 fallen in the desperate, unsuccessful rescue mission to the Gush that failed, the place where you now live, Elias. So here is my invitation to you. I hope here is the line, behold, our mothers are bowed and silent, our friends choking with tears, bursts of grenades, etc., and signs, and so on. And I want to continue to the next one. Elias, I'd like you to look at this slide, if you will. You have biblical allusions. You have allusions to connect you to the Nathan Alterman poem that was created because of the Abba Kovner story about coming back to life in the Vilna ghetto. You have quoted Chaim Guri that if I am not mistaken is the only one of these sources that you, you know personally, unless you also know Arnon Lapid, which I don't know about. And you quoted Anon Lapid. So I don't know if you ever looked at this together as the basis for your poem. And I'm asking you, and you don't have to, just in case you are ready, to say a word about this world that comes together in this very, very important poem of yours, will you? Just remember to unmute if you are speaking. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm speechless now. Uh, even, even a poet can lose his words sometimes and you made, you made, me, you made me Rachel this moment. Uh, it's, it's, it's so strongly reflecting all the illusions and all the layers that you know, some some of them are, are not in a, in a, in a, in a, in a clear world in, in 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 my consciousness when I'm writing. You know, the, I I learn a lot of a lot of uh, uh, from the Bible. I know by heart, so it's 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 in my blood circle. But but you you touched so brilliantly. In, in 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 those layers and reflected them and and all all them are are, are, are major uh, influence in in this poem. I, I can say that the 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 question of uh, how how we have the permission to cry for Israelis is very very basic in our culture, like like you said, and and I remember when I was. A, a, a soldier in in my in my uh, in my uh, duty when I was young, uh, and I served in Lebanon. And some of my uh, my friends, close friends, fall in the battles in Lebanon. Uh, and during their funerals, uh, soldiers cried, and this this was the first time during the 90s that soldiers let themselves cry out before the cameras and and it, it was it was loudly asked how the generation changed and and i think that i belong to the generation that uh, the you know the the tough guy warrior commandant of of the israelis is much, much complicated, much softer, uh, uh, full of empathy, not only to his unit, but also to, to, to the, the struggle itself of, of the 
of, of the security of Israel and even, even empathy and, 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 and sensitivity to, to the enemy even, yeah, to the Palestinians, to the um, Arabs around us. And some will say that it's too soft. It's, it's even dangerous, you know. And I think it's crucial. It's, 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 you, you cannot be, we, we you know, we, we can hear politicians that, that uh, uh, telling us that we are, uh, will keep our swords forever and we will live by, by weapons um, forever. And I think it, it's much more complicated in, in, in the, the humanity. In, in the most uh, hard occasions themselves, and if we mention the, the disengagement, I know that this, this poem of Invitation to Cry, I heard it from the both sides of the settlers of Gush Katif and the commanders of, of the disengagement, uh, especially from uh, General Gershon Akohen that was command on, on, on the chief command of, of the disengagement. They took this poem, Gershon, General Akohen took the poem and copied it with thousands of copies to, to that each soldier will have it in his pocket to remember what he is doing. That, yes, that, I, will, I will ask you to keep more for the conversation that we have later. Thank okay. you for this. It was amazing and extremely important for us to hear your voice. And uh, keep your questions for later because I'd like to take you on another journey and I did not forget the music. We are coming back to the music as well, but not before we read the next one. Because if this, the first invitation to cry uh, or to weep was, I would say a challenge exactly as Elias has said to a certain way of conduct that was accepted of Israelis, when we come to the next one, we have a problem because Elias is now taking on a prayer. And I don't know that you can see, but now that you turn your head, we can all see your kippah. It's there. So not that I think that you need a reminder of the Shema, but I wanted the Shema to be on the screen and give you 30 seconds to just remind yourself of what it says. It's a call upon all of us to remember God his uniqueness, his oneness, and our responsibility to be faithful to his teaching, to Torah. And now we come to a poem that Elias had named, Hear, O Lord, unlike here or Israel. Elias, will you read Shema Adonai Yichud Yamim Noraim for us in Ivrit, please? Unmute, please. Yeah. I, I will read it and I will, I will, with your permission, I will pray it. Befakasha. Shema Adonai, Yichud Liyamin Noraim. Shema Adonai, Israel Amecha, Israel Echad, Ve'ahavta et Israel Amecha. בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הבנים האלה אשר נהרגים עליך כל היום על לבביך ושיננתם ברקיעיך ודיברת בם ושבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, ספרות, חולות 
זרחניות, והיו לטוטפות בין עיניך, כמו פגיעת הצלפים, וכתבתם בדם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. תודה. Heather, will you do this very special Shema for us in English? Hear, O Lord, a poem of oneness for the days of all. Hear, O Lord, your people is Israel, your people is one. And thou shalt love thy people Israel with all thine heart and with all thy might and with all, with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these sons that die on your account all day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt remember them diligently in thy heavens, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine arm, incandescent blue numbers. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, like a sniper's shot, and thou shalt write them in blood upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. In the source sheets that I have sent you, you will see sources that will tell you that the issue of what is written in God's Tefillin is not something that Elias had invented. It's a notion. People before him felt the need to check on God. And this indeed is a poem of calling upon God to listen. We have prayed for you all these years. Will you now look at us? And then the whole structure of the Shema is there with your heart and with your soul and with your might. And then come the two major elements that God, according to Elias, needs to be aware of. The sons that are killed in your name on your account every day. Do you remember them? Do you see them? Do you repeat their names? Do you talk about them? In the morning, when you wake up, just like in the prayer. Oh, and by the way, when you come to laying the fill in, I want them to be like those blue digits that are and wear in the arms of so many of us. And they had to fill in. Can they look like when a sniper hits a person? And then you can ride them with blood on the mezuzot and the gates as we are coming close to Pesach. When the blood on the doors was what saved us. And I'm not sure that Elias thinks this is saving us, maybe and maybe not. So if the first one we read, or actually the second after the sick with love, is a challenge on Israeli customs, modes of behavior, this time Elias is really calling upon to me a much higher challenge. Coming and living in the world of the faithful, he's challenging the divine. Elias, would you like to add a little bit for our understanding or maybe even how this was received? You don't have to. You can say no and I can continue from there. It's really up to you. Maybe we'll keep it to the conversation to, to whom we said or the more. I'm totally agreeable and you are right, but I'd like to still, you know that we will have all the time in the world for the conversation later, but if there is anybody in the group that right now, you know, it's burning in their heart to say something because they are shocked, they are offended, they love it, 
like just a quick comment for now, I can take one or two. Anybody that really cannot let me continue without say, saying something in their heart. Yes, Suzanne. It took my breath away. When, when he said the blue numbers, I went. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. And we will let you talk more to that later. This is exactly what I was inviting. So if there is anybody with a similar kind or something like that. Yes, Carol, please go ahead. Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, to me, it's reminiscent of the Amichai poem, El Mole Rachamim. Lu haya rachamim bo, he should leave us some. Yeah, he took it all for himself. And it's, to me, it's reminiscent of that. I don't know. Very so this is in the tradition you are saying, Elias is in good company. Okay. Very good. Challenging. Calling That's God to correct. be accountable. Like maybe Yitzchak me berdichev. And was the stuff I eingesetzt mm -hmm. auf dein Volk Israel. And was a wilftuf in sein dein Volk Israel. And choose somebody else. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so that was the Yiddish that not all of us understand. That's all right. Thank You'll you. translate. Very good. If you can. No, I cannot. Can. Okay. I cannot. But I will one day. But thank you, Carol. I will take a, okay, why don't I take you, Linda, because I saw you first. I'll keep everybody, everybody else for later because we still have a couple of things that I love to do. So, Linda, why don't you go ahead now? Uh, it took my breath away. Uh, thank you. And um, especially, I think, the line about the sniper. Uh, my daughter was a sniper instructor uh, 2007 to 10. And uh, she lives in Yafo now. And I know in the years since, she's very ambivalent about uh, everything. That that that. We will have time and patience for all of us, Chavarim. But let me now ask a, a, our musician, are you ready to play something additional for us? Please keep Hadashot news for the end. What would you like to play for us now? Uh, so I'll be glad to play one of my songs, which uh, I was written. Um, uh, in Hebrew, it calls En Aleha. Uh, it's En Aleha. Uh, it's kind of an Israeli slang, which says there's nothing like her. Uh, nobody like her. Okay. Nobody like her. <laughs> okay, um, and please, Chavirim, keep yourself muted. En Aleha, Bivakasha. Arosh Bakirot, En Tutsaot, Achshav Yalcha, Bidrachim Acherot. אבל כמו תמיד היא חוזרת ומפתה מציקה אלף שקרים אלף סודות גם כשהחזרת הכל והפסקת לחיות תמיד היא חזרה ומצאה את החור בלב מציקה יד והיא מתחמקת לרגע הולכת בשדות אחרים פתאום היא תופסת אותך מבפנים ואז בשנייה שוב לוקחת אותך למטה בלי סיבה Thank 
החזקת לה יד והיא מתחמקת. עשתה לי בית ספר, צבא, ילדים. כתבתי לה כבר ערימות של שירים זה לא משנה, תחזרי בצורה אחרת אהבה אין, אין עליה כל החיים בעקבותיה חיפשתי נמוך חיפשתי גבוה, עכשיו שהיא כאן אני לא נותן לה לברוח, אני לא נותן לה לברוח, אני לא נותן לה לברוח. And oh. we are going back for at least one more poem before we break into our free conversation. But this one I, I insist on doing because it was so important to me. Sometimes you don't get to influence my choice. Sometimes things come from the heart. So one of the things that I... often was fascinated about is this thing about the blessing of the priests, the Kohanim. You know, you go to Shul and there is Dr. Katz, the pediatrician, and Mr. Kahana, the banker, and Mr. Azulai, the teacher, and whatever. And you know all of them and you know what they do and what their trades are. And then comes that moment and they are on the bima and they are covered with their talitot, not talisim as you say, talitot in Hebrew. And then magic happens. And suddenly they are representative of Aaron, the first priest ever. And they can bless us. And Amichai once captured it in a poem that I love to teach and I even sent you the recording of my teaching. And I'm not teaching you the Amichai poem, just the line here when he talks about Jerusalem, where its holiness sometimes turns into love. And to me, it was the incarnation of the blessing of the priest because they are, they have the holiness of Aaron and then they have the commandment to bless the people with love. And then I come to Eliezer's poem. which is not yet officially and professionally translated into English because it comes from his most recent book published during these Corona days. And I got it online. I never even had to go to a store and leaf through it before I bought it. I just did. And then I saw this poem about Aaron. Who came in the middle of the blessing and it's part of a seven poem group that deal with the Ushpizin, the guests that come to the Sukkah, you know. So Eliaz, will you read to us Be'emtza Habracha Ba'aharon and then I will read the English translation that we, Eliaz and I, created together for the sake of this session. Bevakasha, Eliaz. באמצע הברכה באה אהרון. פתאום, באמצע הברכה באה אהרון. בדיוק כשפניתי עם אחיי הכהנים, אחורינו לאהרון, פנינו מכוסים בטלית אל העם. חשתי בו, חופה עליי שכן, על כתפיי, משים ידיו, מעל ידיי, לרגע אף שילבנו אצבעות, דבר לא נפל, האור הוכפל, 
כל תג בנפש כמו היה מוכן. אחר כך ירד עמי מהדוכן, בשיבה לסנדלים, בנטילת ערבה והדס ולולב, וגם את רוג הלב, בהלל, בלוויית כל כלי שיר, שר עמי בדמע, בדבקות, כי חילצת עיני מן דמעה, נפשי ממוות. רציתי כל כך שיישאר איתי גם למוסף, בלא מילים לי נעתר וגם נחשף, ושם על הפרוכת, ברך אותי, וגם שמרני, האיר פניי, ואף חנני, נשא ליבי, נפשי, גופי, ובכולם אשים שלום. רציתי לנשקו במצח. אליאז, אתה שם? כן. רציתי לנשקו במצח. נשיקת נכד לסבו, במקום השם הגדול והנורא, אבל הוא כבר נתעלה ממני, ונתעופף בחזרה. אוקיי, let me do the English, I'm not, it was a perfect accent because I didn't send it ahead of time to our readers. Aharon came in the midst of the blessing. Suddenly in the middle of the blessing, Aharon came. Just when together with my brothers, the priests, I turned our backs to the ark, our faces to the people covered with prayer shawls. I felt him covering, dwelling on my shoulders, laying his hands over my hands. For a minute, we even crossed our fingers. Nothing dropped down, the light multiplied, as if every particle of the soul was ready. Then he stepped down from the pulpit, back to the sandals, taking the arava, hadas, lulav, and the trog of the heart, for Hallel accompanied by all instruments of music, singing and weeping with me with devotion. For you rescued my eyes from tears, my soul from death. I wanted it so much to stay with me for the Musaf too. Wordlessly he ascended and yearned, and there on the curtain he blessed me and guarded me, shone his face and pardoned. He carried my heart, my soul, my body, and placed peace in them all. I wanted to kiss him on his forehead, a grandson kiss to grandfather at the spot of God Almighty, but he already ascended and flew back. I'd like for us to capture, as we are closing the official part of this session, the amazing texture of combining a moment of blessing a moment because you are a Kohen and Elias, you know, is, you have the right, the duty, the privilege, the experience of taking that holy descendants all the way from the first priest ever, Aharon, and literally feel his presence on your hands, on your shoulders, reciting the prayer. You have all that. You can see it in the text. But I, I want you to see is the playfulness that Elias in the role of a Kohen standing there and blessing the community is totally at ease. And he can combine fingers with Aaron as you would do with a beloved one. And then they can stand down from the bima and put the sandals on, you know, as Israelis would. Who among you Americans would even think of coming on high holiday to the synagogue with sandals, would you? But in Israel, you would. It's fine. He's at home. And then it gets a step further because he's nudging him as a little bit, you know, can you stay for Musaf? Can you stay a little bit longer? Grandpa, I need you. 
but he says, no, I need to go kind of thing. So you want to kiss him as a grandchild would at the very same place. And then come that last line. You said earlier that a line in the poem held your breath. I come to this line and I crack up laughing. And why do I crack up laughing? Because of the Hebrew. It says, hit ofef bechazara. And all the Israelis will recognize the picture of the poem of Fania Bergstein, Boy Lai Parpar Nechmad, which is a children's poem that every Israeli child knows. Shevetz li al kafayad, come to me, dear butterfly. Sit on my hand. Sit, calm down, don't be afraid. And then fly away, v'ta'uf b'chazara, fly back. And Elias is using totally a quote from that naive, magical moment of a child trying to hold a butterfly, but it needs to fly away. So Aaron, just like the butterfly of your childhood, flies away. Elias, you gave me so much pleasure in love in this poem, and I hope others can share it too. Let me do the following. I'd like to, here's just a quote from that verb in the word in Hebrew of laying hands. That is a, a, a biblical quote from Deuteronomy. And I'd like to suggest to you that the last song that Ari Gorali will sing to us is from a poem by Elias called The News. And it's a play on many words in Hebrew that you hear in the news. And sometimes they are hard to translate. So I'd like to go through the English. The news on the radio say another terrorist attack at Kisufim. Kisufim is a junction where you can have terrorist attacks, but it also means longing. And the woman met her death, a, a literal translation from the Hebrew, as if you really want to meet your death. They also said that the government meeting will discuss the threat of earthquakes, as if they didn't know. A wayward bullet is searching for its stop address. I saw a man seeking brothers all along the way. In the analytical mind, the red light went on long ago. So what I'd like you to show, and we will enjoy Ari's singing in a moment of this poem while I leave it for another minute on, that what I pointed out to you, the playfulness with the presence of Aaron can be seen in many other poems by Elias, where he takes the literal meaning of what they say in the government, what they say in the news, what they say about the weather, etc and sort of makes a little bit fun of them, or rather invites us to think about them again. In a moment, we will conclude with the th singing, but since it's time for many that may need to go, let me just tell you that next Thursday, Elias is back with four more, with three more poets, a uh, women, who are all part of Mashiva Ruach, uh, my friend Shlomit Naim Naor, Sivan Harshefi that you have met already, and Bekol Serloi for another beautiful meaning, uh, a meeting of their poetry together. On Tuesday, we are doing the next session about Zelda. And now, Ari, will you sing Chadashot? <laughs> for us to conclude our session. And if any of you need to go now, let me say goodbye and thank you for being with us. Ari, bevakasha. And please keep yourself muted, everybody. Thank you so much. I, I want to uh, tell about, uh, we, we got, I got to know Elias kind of 20 years ago. Uh, connected to um, a musical project, um, that, that will deal with uh, Israeli uh, uh, poem, uh, poetry. Um, and uh, uh, my partner there, uh, Ronit Kano, uh, that became my wife a few 
years after, uh, was she composed this song. <laughs> the, the project called Arba'im Alot, 40 Degrees, uh, as uh, Dan Pagis uh, song. Chadashot. Uh, בחדשות אמרו, שוב פגעו בכיסופים, ואישה אחת מצאה את מותה, שעד עכשיו היה עובד בגאיות. עד עכשיו היה עובד בגאיות. עוד אמרו, בישיבת הממשלה ידונו ברעידות האדמה שעלולות. ולא חשים איך הארץ כבר רועדת, לא חשים איך הארץ כבר... כדור טועה, מחפש כתובת רכה. ראיתי איש מבקש אחים בדרך. הים יהיה נוח כשנגיע אליו בלי כוח זהו סוף החדשות ברדיו אמרו חדשות ובלב היו חדשות ישנות לקחנו את הפקלח על שכם, חריצי גבינה אחד לחם, ושבנו ללכת, שבנו ללכת. כדור טועה, מחפש כתובת רכה, ראיתי מחפש אחים בדרך. הים יהיה נוח כשנגיע אליו בלי כוח. זהו סוף החדשות. זהו סוף החדשות. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't know if you could notice you were singing and playing. Somebody put a remark in the chat which I thought was very meaningful uh, to you, Ariel as well, uh, Elias as well. It said it has the intonation of an Edgar carrot story. And I think it's a compliment. And I think it's a good understanding of this particular poem. Chavirim, this is time for me to thank our readers, to thank our muters, to thank our musicians, and all of you who were here and who cannot stay for the next part, which is the conversation. So if you need to go, have a wonderful rest of the day. And we are here for, at least I, I hope Elias too, as long as you want us to. So let me start by collecting names of people who would like to ask, make comments, references. Dorothy, I remember you from earlier. And Elizabeth, I have your name from earlier as well. And who else do I have? I see Elizabeth Freshman. Suzanne. Suzanne, okay, I have you. And uh, Ed, if you see any additional names, will you help me? Sure. Heather, I see your hand up. Thank you. I will want one more name for now to start the first round. So if you can give me one, you don't have Lynn. to. Enough. Who? Lynn. Ha Lynn. Lynn Heller. is great. Okay. So, Bevakasha, everybody else remains muted, please. Elias, please unmute yourself. I'm sure the questions will be to you and not to me. And that's the way they should be. So Dorothy, why don't you go first? Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Elias. This was beautiful, powerful, sensitive. 
heartbreaking, uplifting, and, and many other things. It was wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm putting the comments together for an invitation to cry and hear a Lord. And um, the you first want to put them back on the screen. Um, I, I don't know if it's necessary. Um, okay, just tell me when you want me to. Yeah. So in, it seems to me, looking at it a second time as I'm going through, that the invitation to cry is also an invitation for God to cry, not just the soldiers. That there is a need to feel God's compassion for the anguish that people are experiencing in their land, in this land. And, um, and that is picked up very clearly in Hear a Lord, you know, in the image of, it should be a sign between your eyes. You should see it, you should feel it. You should, you should be there with us. We need rachamim, we need compassion. We need to know that our pain and our agony um, have touched you, oh God. It's not a, a prayer for stopping war. It's not a prayer for making us win. It's a prayer for look at us and, and find a place in your soul for us. Hmm. Thank you, Dorothy. And Elias, you feel free. You don't need my permission to neither to cry nor to speak. Go ahead. I agree with Dorothy. I, th I think, uh, you know, in the, in the great, great legacy of, of uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm not comparing myself to these great masters, but like we know, uh, stories about uh, Rav Lev Yitzchak from the beaches uh, that uh, asked God the empathy. And, and, and he knew that he, he cannot control uh, the, the actions and the, the pogroms and the, the et cetera, et cetera. But, but we know so many stories. And, and you know, it, it, it starts from the greatest believers from Abraham, from Moses, that confronted God uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a so uh, brave way um, that that uh, I the little one I, I let myself myself in a in a in a very very uh, hard days uh, uh, during the second intifada it, it was written I, I saw in, in in the chat that I, I was asked when was the poem written the poem was written uh, in in the last days. Uh, of of the Hebrew uh, first year of the second Intifada, during the last days of Elul, uh, you know it, it's 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 special days in, in in the Jewish calendar, and and we 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 always uh, open our hearts and and thinks and feel that we are maybe have a chance to be more close to God, and maybe He will heal. And I was called to a uh, reserve duty in the desert. And then really, really don't uh, look at me like a lunatic, but uh, in, in one moment af after a, a month of silence that I didn't wrote what I wanted to, to write, I, 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 I imagined the skies are open and in the sky, I like, Sort of imaginary, the 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 whispering of hero oh Lord. Yeah. So, so, so the, all the generations, all all generations of, of Jewish martyrs from Ravaki, Rabbi Akiva, that that uh, called uh, uh, Shema Israel. In, in the last sentence, I I heard the opposite, and the, in, in in the other direction. And then I, I took my I, also in my in in my reserve duty. I also always have a, a pen and a paper, and and I wrote it in in seconds. And it 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 came. It I think it's 
few poems I can say that uh, came through me that I didn't really wrote them. I'm not the owner of, of the poem. Uh, and this is one of them. Tuda Rabba, and we will hear more for you Elias, as we go. I'll ask you to mute yourself when you're not talking so we don't have the echo. And we are going to you, Elizabeth, you are next. I, I'm going to talk about here, O oh Lord. And it's just a concept that makes a lot of sense to me, even though I would never have thought of this, but we are betzel, created B'Tselem Elohim. And we have obligations from God but we, B'Tselem Elohim, we have a Yetzer HaTov and a Yetzer HaRa. And sometimes Yetzer HaRa is stronger. And here we're saying God must also, since we're B'Tselem Elohim, God is showing different sides. And we should say to God, you have obligations to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Elias, tell me when you want to give and when you want to continue. Shall we have a few more and then you will yeah, react? I, I think maybe we'll collect. Elizabeth, it was okay, very, very moving what you said. Okay, no. I agree. We'll collect a few. You'll take notes and we'll come back to you. Suzanne, your turn. Or Susan? So, no, 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 it, it is me. Um, on Tuesday, I, I didn't even know where to, I, I couldn't even say anything. Just the whole combination of everything was so amazing. And, and we have gotten to a place, I believe, where the musicians and the poets, there, there's a theme there's something that works together that it's like a magicness. And, and today I felt there was so much coming together, but also bringing in an enormous amount of other things. History with the, with Etzion, Tanakh, a contemporary and not long gone other creators i thought i heard leonard cohen today when when ari was singing i the rhythm the sound of his voice i didn't even understand what he was saying completely i pick up words but leonard cohen was there and i listened to leonard cohen a lot um epker carrot i'm a high it's just like so many things pulled together today. And I also have to say many of these things I knew before, but I, I thank you, you, my friend, Rachel, for awakening in me and I'm sure many other people, these fragmented parts of our lives and bringing them together. When I know Edgar Sherrod, he's a friend of my son's. Um, and and it's it's like all of these things mush together when you when you say it. And we see it in the we saw it in the poetry today, where there were references to other people, Alterman and and Tanakh, a lot of Tanakh. Um, it, it was just extraordinary. And I just feel that you have enriched us, me, for now nearly a year. Um, a year. We will days, days short of a year. Today is the anniversary of the last day that I went out. Wow. And it, I mean, I've obviously been out, but went out without worrying. And yet there was that niggling because I was supposed to have gone to Argentina on March 15th. And I was already thinking of not going and I didn't, <laughs> but it, I just feel that my life has been so enriched through all of this, that everything came together today in such an extraordinary thank you. way. Thank you so much, Susan. 
there is a little bit of noise in the background there, so I'm going to mute you. Thank you for that. Heather, please. Hi, Rachel. I, I, I'm not as eloquent, but I will add, I will agree with everything that Susan said. It, uh, you, you have really enriched our lives a lot, um, amazingly. Um, and I wanted to say that uh, this, this, the, the question of, of, of bringing God to account was so beautifully brought through the CSP um, programming in January. And I wanted to thank Ari for that, where we, we discussed Eli Wiesel for a, for a month. And they brought up the, the, the issue of God being brought to account in the concentration camp. And so that, that brought that very much, uh, that's very part of the, the tradition. But I wanted to discuss the first poem too and talk about the, um, I thought it was so interesting that in the first poem about love, that the heart was closed up, the garden was closed and these vine tendrils were trying to get in. And there, there was something there about the pain of love, the vulnerability of the poet not really wanting to open up, knowing that it's dangerous to open up to love. And, you know, nobody discussed that, but I, I, I wanted to say that I recognized these uh, very sort of paradoxical elements that he wants the love and he, it makes him actually sick, not just sick with love, but sick. And he doesn't know whether he really wants that or he doesn't want that because he's, his heart is closed and tied up and these tendrils are trying to get in. So I thought that was a very interesting, unique way of looking at it. Thank you, Elias. Rabba, Rabba, Heather. Let's take Lynn and then I'll ask you to respond, uh, Elias. Okay, Lynn, will you go now? Thank you. Yes, um, I am drawn to here, O oh Lord. I'm an observant Jew and I didn't find a problem with this poem because there's a beautiful midrash that Rashi brings to bear when Moshe is asking God, I want to see your face. And God says, Lo adam v'chai. a man can't see my face. And Rashi picks up on it. What does Moshe see? Achorai. And he says, what does Moshe see? He imagines God wearing tefillin and he sees the knot of the tefillin that we're knotted together. There's a connection. And I'm, I, I'm thinking that what you're doing here, Elias, is that you are calling us to expand and re-examine our connection to God. And how do we articulate it? And how do we express it without a fear of being stricken down? Because we're in the tradition of Moshe and Abraham of speaking to God. But through that sacred connection of tefillin. Thank you. It was an extraordinary session today. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, very much. Elias, will you take a round of reactions and then we'll take some more comments. Just remember to unmute, please. So uh, Elizabeth and Suzanne and Heather and, and Lynn, I, I, you know, when, when a poet writes his poetry, he, 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 I, I mentioned it, it, it's not always he, he and me, uh, writing it uh, with with full consciousness and and full awareness, and I think that what is so beautiful in, in poetry and, and and you know Rachel is is the master that shows us how many uh, allusions and how many layers there are, and especially in you know you know in in Hebrew poetry that that each word uh, can can throw you. From the Bible to the very modern, postmodern uh, uh, books and poetry in Israel. So uh, I thank you about all all the reflections because some of them I I, I did I, I wasn't aware when I for them when when I wrote uh, the poems. Uh, Lynn, what you mentioned. Uh, uh, and now is 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 so uh, uh, moving because it it it's a, it, it was so um, dark and and hard days when I wrote the the poem and and it, it's it's connected uh, in in my soul to to those days but but you are right it's it's a real invitation for each one of us to explore. Uh, our uh, relationship with with God and 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 we we had we have 
a, a, a huge and deep uh, legacy in, in our tradition, in the Jewish tradition, to make how to how to make it, like you said from Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, so uh, and it's called Kesher Shel Tfilin. Kesher. Ah, ah, wow! This is wonderful. This is really wonderful. And uh, you know, tomorrow morning when I will. Uh, uh, have this experience of, of the tefillin, I, I, I will, I will uh, have, have the, the new, maybe the new uh, moving, the new feeling uh, from your uh, wonderful words. And Heather, I think that everyone uh, that experienced a very uh, strong love and the connection of love and also the complexity of love, you know, love for life, your 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 love story for 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 life uh, knows that that this this is it it there are times when when the the heart is so open and that the heart himself can can be can be uh, can be hearted. Uh, uh, okay. So, and uh, uh, it can be very painful. But uh, uh, I I think our uh, love story uh, that I have uh, with Efrat from almost twenty six years now, it it's uh, it it has you know uh, like. Uh, a, 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 a big uh, love story. It has its times, and uh, and ups and downs, and but but but, but uh, not not like the song of songs that the the beloved one are not uh, meeting each other, and they are only longing. I had really the privilege to 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 experience. Uh, the love and in a very very deep uh, ways. Uh, so my my and I have many many uh, love poems that we didn't touch it and Rachel uh, planned to read the. Uh, we to, will. Uh, I will now. I will the now. Sound, so yeah, yeah. I I think it's all all the cycle of life of life uh, 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 are uh, uh, inviting us. Uh, to 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 write write them down and and when you are writing you are dis discovering many new new things about yourself. Elias, why don't you take a why don't we take a minute because I love ultrasound so much and I think uh, we could give it the minute that or so that it will take. And where is it? Did I not put it on? Okay, so I see that I made a mistake, did not put ultrasound on. So let me just check again in my PowerPoint if I have it further down the road. I do not. So uh, here is what I suggest. I'd like to read ultrasound. Do you have it in your text? Yes, yeah, I, I, you, you, you uh, send us it. Yes. The... yes, I know that. Yes, it's so in the text. Why don't, why don't I ask you, Elias, to read the Ivrit of ultrasound? Meanwhile, I will uh, find the text, not on the PowerPoint, but in my uh, other folders, and we can see it in a Word document, I hope, in a minute. So, Elias, why don't you just read us ultrasound and then we can address it and I will put it on in a minute. Rachel, you sent it to us. Yeah, yeah. We, we have it, uh, but Rachel, uh, we will, Rachel will, uh, will find it. I, and, I uh, know that I sent it to you <laughs> and not only did I send it to you, but now I'm putting it on the screen for you to see. Okay. okay. We all have it. We all have it, Rachel. I know that. I know that I sent it to you. I just did not include it in the PowerPoint, but I have it in my Word document. And now I trust you can see it on your screen. So, uh, Elias, why don't you do the Ivrit? Yeah. 
באולטרסאונד. וכל העם רואים את הקולות. הנה, גם אנחנו. לב קטן רוקד באדום וכחול. מחרוזת פנינים השדרה, או קרני השמש. חמש אצבעות מחפשות, ועוד חמש. איבר המין נחבא, וממילא לא רצינו לדעת. משהו רועד בנו מבפנים, רוצה ולא יכול לגעת. Thank you. Eliaz, when I am asking Stuart to read this, you have no idea what we are doing. Because Stuart is actually Professor Staten, who is a gynecologist. Wow. Go, ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Stuart, and read us ultrasound. I trust you never had a poem uh, so related to what you do and did for so many years in life. Vivakasha, please. Oda. Oh, no. And all the people saw the sounds. Look, we do too. A tiny heart dancing in red and blue, the spine, a pearl necklace or sun rays, five fingers searching and five more. The sex or the organ hidden. In any case, we didn't want to know. Something is trembling inside us, wanting but unable to touch. Okay, thank you. Can I add one comment about the sex organ? Yeah. That women who are pregnant will know the sex of the fetus, the newborn, because the sex organ can be displayed by ultrasound. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. And we will now continue with our conversation. But I felt, uh, Heather, that Elias wanted you to see that part of the love story, as well as many of us have experienced those moments of and, and seeing you, your unborn baby. Yeah. My, my husband is a pediatric cardiologist who does fetal ultrasound all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's his specialty. <laughs> okay. So. And do I have any more people who would like to ask a question, make a comment, tell us a story that relates to your experiences today in this session, by all means, raise your hand. Yeah, I can see you, Carol, hang on for a minute. And do I have anybody else? Yes, Martha, okay. Deborah. And who, Deborah, okay. A, Carol, I have, Deborah, I have, Martha, I have. Is there anybody else that I am missing? Not right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to make a comment, Yocheved. Ah, Yocheved. Okay, sure. Bevakasha. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, Carol, why don't you go first? You will need to unmute. You remember that. Yeah, okay. I, I just want to thank you, Rachel, for uh, bringing us contemporary poetry. I thought I was an expert on Hebrew poetry, and I know I do know a lot, and I teach it. But these are wonderful, you know, poets from Israel, and it's really broadening my horizon, and I'm eternally grateful. And this is only my second or third meeting with you. Uh, some of the women that I teach told me about you, and I am, I, I, I can't tell you what a privilege it was. And I just wanted to make a comment in the tradition of Abraham and Job and Lady of Bardichev, who I quoted before, to argue with God calling him to account is a particularly, I think, Jewish um, tradition. Now, I remember Cardinal Spellman years ago in New York saying that what we have to thank the Jews for is their suffering. They gave us the greatest gift of suffering. And I said to myself, why don't you suffer? Leave us alone. <laughs> I, just, I just, you know, took that so poorly uh, you know, how, how dare he say that the greatest gift the Jews gave to the world is their suffering, but that's how they look at Christ, you know, so, uh, you know, he died for us on the cross and suffering. So I do want to tell you, and the last thing I want to say is something that Elias said, you know, sometimes he discovers things by other people's comments that he didn't even know about. And uh, Cynthia Ozick once mentioned to me that if she had been in analysis 
in analysis had gone through psychotherapy, she probably wouldn't have been able to write the way she does. <laughs> in other words, her writing, her writing helped her in a way from, from reactions of readers to understand more about her because she didn't see a lot of this, the things that she was writing about and other people did. And thank you again, my dear. I'm going oh, to thank you for sharing the story, especially about Cynthia Ozick. I love better than the Cardinal. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And we are going to Deborah and I have your name, Ed, as well. And Martha after that. Deborah, why don't you go ahead? Okay, thank you so much. Um, I, I just have a few comments of appreciation today for turns of phrase um, in um, a number of the poems. Uh, in the last one, the spine as a pearl necklace um, is so striking, so beautiful. I, I wanted to just, just say that aloud to the poet's ears. Um, for me as well, uh, when we um, looked at an invitation to cry, along with all of the the, the rich layers of allusion, um, there was something that struck me um, when there's an invitation for mourners to uh, to enter, taste the round pretzels, like the children who are even now tumbling on the rug, um, like fate and the pretzels and the children tumbling was uh, a beautiful uh, combination. Uh, I, I called it visual onomatopoeia to myself. It was, it was seeing what was happening, the tumbling and the pretzel together, a very, very vivid imagery. Um, for me, the Shema is one of those basics. Um, it was bedtime and we would say the Shema. So I, uh, I know it and I know the rhythm in Hebrew. Um, and um, and to, to hear and read your poem, I think as you read it in Hebrew, I was reading along except for uh, the, the passages that you interpolated so brilliantly into it. And um, I felt both the prayerful worshipful tone of it, as well as that heretical um, aspect that there was a bit of heresy in, it, it seemed to me, in, in stopping in the, you know, in the very rhythms of the prayer to say, hey, you. And, and again, the, the power of the visual imagery. Um, Suzanne talked about the incandescence of the uh, the, the blue uh, numbers, and for me, the sniper uh, bullet for the uh, the frontlet, um, absolutely brilliant. And my last comment has to do with the uh, the poem about Aaron. Um, in our synagogue, when I was a child, um, we used to be you know hushed for the priestly blessing we weren't to look i was you know my i was uh israelite not not levi not not cohen but but it was always odd for me to see the kids that i grew up with once they were bar mitzvah were up there with their fathers and their brothers and in their stinky stock stocking feet and um and it's really interesting for me to see it from the other side of the bima, from the Kohen and the Kohen who felt the, um, as you said, this, this experience of the generations uh, that was part of your fulfilling the, the priestly uh, benediction. So I, I thank you for the imagery and for the power of all of those things. Tuda, Rabba, Rabba, Deborah, and we are going to Martha, your turn and you have it after that. I just wanted to say that I was overwhelmed by Hero God, oh Lord. I, it just broke me up. I was really very moved. And I want to speak to uh, Heather's statement. It's come up before about Elie Wiesel's The Trial of God. I hate to give, give away anything, but I'm assuming that most people have not read, read it and it's not performed as a play often, I don't know whether anyone has seen it, the defense attorney for God is Satan, which 
gives you should give us pause and make us wonder. I mean, it's complicated. It's not simple. Martha. And I don't and I don't know where the quote comes from, but I do remember over the years Elie Wiesel speaking about the loneliness of God, that God is the loneliest of characters. So Martha, I just will wanted you, to will that. you tell Elias about your connection to Elie Wiesel? I was his personal assistant for 27 years at Boston University. And um, my I was privileged to be able to sit in on all of his classes over those 27 years. So things are coming to my memory uh, and that just stick, sticks with me. But I, I don't know where he said it about God being the loneliest, um, but he, he said it more than once. Thank you. Thank you for also sharing your connectedness. I know that Elias would appreciate it. And we are coming to Yochevet, all the way from Sydney, Australia. Vivakasha. Um, today was, it's like everything was coming together. They, um, I, everything, I've lost everything. Elias. He's just magic. He's a young Israeli, and I don't know what, how, what, how, I, what, my, where my feelings come from. Um, but my whole body was on fire, and it's the first time in the sessions that my I have felt like this. Um, I don't have the poetry in front of me, so I apologize, but. All the poems, they came from a, a childhood upbringing and a longing. And I think this longing is, comes, is in our lives all the time. And especially the soldiers, I have a great affinity to everyone in Israel. Um, and the, yeah. But there was a, a, an allusion to the poetry and uh, Elias was saying that um, when he writes, he's not aware of actually what he, it, words just come, emotions. And the, the results is accepted by, by the listener. And the same is the same happens in artwork. I know this is what ha is happening. Also happens with when I paint. That you put down something because you have this a, a feeling coming out. But then in the end, you look at it, and it's it's a totally different painting to what one thought was one was putting down. And that's the beauty of words and paint. And I think this is our life. Thank you so much, Yochevet. Uh, Ed, it's your turn, right? Meanwhile, uh, Elias, there was a question about you and to fill in, and maybe people do not understand that you indeed are observant. So when Ed and Heather are done, I would like you to come back to a little bit about yourself and your way of life. And Ed, your turn. Yes, um, I have to echo what many other people have have said. It it was ironic that you, as a Cohen, Cohen, had music that sounded also like Cohen, who was not a Cohen, in the same sense, Be, because the Leonard Cohen um, music very much resonated in terms of your verse. So I found that interesting. I found that you have. Um, you are modern Orthodox. You served in the army, correct? Okay. Because you bring to bear, I, been, I and many of the people here have been studying um, Amichai for years. And, and, and the army was very much a formative part of his growing up as a poet, as well as an individual. And it very much influenced him. He came from an Orthodox background. Um, he changed. You 
have have stayed in the orthodox background but you understand the contemporary scene and you understand others and how they how they relate and the irony and the humor comes through which is very much part of what is shocking for some people but is very much engaging for almost everyone else because Amichai turned things around the way you turn the Shema around totally and it's either brilliant or it's insightful or it's just thoughtful whatever but I'm curious as to who who have been the influences in terms of your poetry and how have you we have some poets who are political altermen I'm thinking of we have some poets Amichai is apolitical in most respects and I'm curious as to where you might be on that dimension well do you have a semester Ed <laughs> I have a semester. He only, it's already 11 o'clock your time. <laughs> we don't care. We are good. So, a uh, Elias, I think that Ed deserves when we will hear Heather first and then you get your chance. Beyond explaining about your way of life, I think a word about your connection to Avichai is also in place right now. Heather, your comment to question and then we will let uh, Eliad respond. Uh, res no, nothing. Go ahead, Elias, uh, and whatever comes to mind. Okay. So first of all, uh, deep uh, thanks to, to Karen and Yocheved and Deborah and Martha uh, on all of their uh, uh, so sensitive reflections. Like you said, you, you, you are reaching uh, me, myself, the, the, the poet, you know, because uh, uh, each one of your of, of your words of your uh, reflections uh, are, are some of them are new for me. And uh, uh, Deborah, when when you mentioned the the the, the images, the, these are the places that I I'm, I'm not always thankful about about what I'm writing. But when I recognize some lines, some spots in, in a poem that, that an image be, become like it's alive, this is the places that I'm really uh, become thankful uh, uh, about this gift of, of, uh, of writing. Ed, you mentioned uh, Amichai and, uh, and, and you asked me about uh, who 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 uh, is inspiring me? Uh, so Amichai is, is is really one of of uh, my sources, my roots, my teachers. Uh, not only from his books, but also personally. I I had the privilege to to know him in his last years, and and uh, we become became uh, very close. Uh, and he he was so happy. Uh, when he discovered us, the, the, the young generation of poets that uh, were related to Mashiva Ruach, Journal of Poetry, uh, that uh, our uh, next uh, Thursday meeting uh, will be dedicated to, to this project. And uh, he, he even, you know, his uh, uh, sensitivity and, and, and irony also, his humor, his sense of humor, so in the first time we met Amichai in his home, in, in uh, Yemin Moshe, uh, uh, in Jerusalem, uh, he, he told us that he, if he know, knew, if he knew that uh, a bunch of poets, of, po of, of poets, of Orthodox poets, of modern Orthodox poets will come and establish Mashiva uh, Ruach, maybe he uh, wasn't became uh, unreligious and uh, secular. Uh, so it was in humor, but but he, he, he was so more than pleased. Yeah? He, 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 he had a crash on our group and, uh, and uh, encouraged us as a group and, and personally. 
and and I I I feel that I'm still learning from his collections, from his books, from his poetry, uh, and and I know that that he is influencing my my poetry and reaching my may, may, may make it more rich, more deep. And uh, and uh, it, it's it's not about you know only following Amichai because you ask about uh, politics politics and I'm also very inspiring from Uritz Grinberg that is you know totally on the on the other edge of of Israeli poetry the uh, from uh, um, expressionist, maybe the most important expression, expressionist uh, poet uh, in Israel uh, poetry, and and very belonging to the to the real uh, edge of 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 the right wing. It's more than right wing. It's it's like prophecies and and and, and also. Uh, in the concrete uh, belonging to the to to be the inspirer of of the Lehi underground and and the most right wing uh, um, uh, not only in, in politics o also spiritually uh, so he is also one of my uh, uh, inspirations and uh, sources and uh, and many many other many other very important poetess like Zelda, like Dali Rabikovic, uh, that I was also related. Zelda, I didn't know her personally. I was too young. But Dali Rabikovic, uh, I, I, I knew very well. And, and we, we had a, a very, I think, beautiful connections. Uh, although the, the gaps, uh, you know, the, the be, uh, total other be backgrounds, um, so uh, I think like Mahmoud Darwish uh, used to say that each poet, especially in the Arab poetry and in the Hebrew poetry, but universally, each poet is, is combined from thousands of poets that were before him, uh, like, like a, a, a an archaeological tale, you know, with many, many layers. And, and this is poetry, this is culture, you know. We, we, we are, in, in Hebrew, we are talking about tarbut, from, from, from a plural, from ribui. And, and, uh, and I think that poetry, and especially Hebrew poetry, Rachel mentioned uh, Isaiah, that was, he, for me, he is not only a prophet, he is a great poet. And King David, uh, of course, and from Psalms and, and others. And, and you mentioned, some of, the, some of you mentioned uh, Leonard Cohen, that he is also not only a great musician, he is also a great poet. And uh, it was very interesting that you heard uh, in, in, in the voice and in some of the music of Ari, my friend, Argoali, that is really great. Uh, the, the, the music and, 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 and the voice of Leonard Cohen and, and we, Ari and me, are deeply connected with, with Leonard Cohen uh, uh, art and music. And, and we are uh, planning to, to uh, have a joint uh, show uh, with Leonard Cohen staffs and our connections and, and uh, the things that Leonard Cohen uh, inspiring uh, us as as a uh, as uh, an, an uh, Israeli uh, Jewish uh, artist. So uh, it's it, it's 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 amazing that you 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 caught it, you 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 listened and you heard it. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any additional comments or questions? Okay, so here is what. I'm going to try and conclude with for today, tonight in Israel. You do realize the time in Israel, right? We are well after 11. Uh, let me just remind everybody, it is 
Thursday, we are going into Shabbat. On Sunday, America goes to daylight saving. Time for Americans and Canadians remain the same. Israelis, we will have the sessions an hour earlier. Europeans, the same. We adjust. Americans, Canadians remain the same because they are the majority and majority rules in this case. Elias, would it be proper for me to ask you for the next session next Thursday because Ed asked about politics and we will read a poem of yours that is more connected to that side of your poetry. But will you be willing to say a few words about Eretz Lekulam, the organization that you so strongly are part of, believe in and active in a land for all, which is a joint work towards peace with Palestinians, of which uh, Elias is part. So if that is okay by you, I will ask you to say a few words about that in our next session. Would you like to conclude this meeting for today? Ah, Yosefa, go ahead. But in English, although you could do it in Ivrit. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to say all the time and I and um, then you about to conclude. Uh, but when you said now that um, that uh, Elias is part of some uh, Eretz Lekulam, I have to say it. I wanted to say from the beginning, it's not the about the, the poetry itself. It's what you said after the... Uh, uh, invitation to uh, um, uh, to cry, Asmana Lebechi. It is uh, well. The Asmana Lebechi. It's uh, it's not that all. It's it, it's allowed. It is healing. And what you said, coming from Elkanah, and I, I as Israeli, I know what it is to to grow up in Elkanah and to be to say what you said earlier about the Intifada and that the, the, the fact that you feel the others. It is a uh, kolaka vote, just kolaka I, I, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to go too deep into that, but I knew that most people, either former Israelis or Israelis today, or people who lived in Israel, would you know the meaning of growing up in Elkanah and becoming the poetic voice that we were privileged enough to hear in the last couple of hours. We are well over two hours, Chavirim. It's time to conclude. I will let Elias conclude for today and invite you to our next week's session. Vivakasha, Elias. So I, I'm really from, from the first beginning of the invitation uh, of Rachel I, I, and Ari uh, Katz. I, I was very moved and, and deeply moved. And, 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 I, and uh, although Rachel... Uh, told me about uh, uh, about all the sessions and about uh, all the groupies. Uh, she didn't mention the groupies. I said uh, because I think that Rachel has a real uh, Hasidic chaser uh, here, and it's it, it's one it's wonderful. You are you are you are Hasidim of the Hebrew poetry, and and Rachel is the rabbi, and uh, uh, I also become. One of the Hasidim, and uh, I thank uh, deeply each one of you. And we we made now almost a tikkun chatzot. You know that is a Hasidic, Kabbalic, uh, mystic uh, tradition, uh, especially in the ends of the week. Uh, we are uh, in Thursday night before Shabbat, and tikkun chatzot to do it with you, with your so open open hearts and minds and, and, and love for, for poetry and for Hebrew poetry. It's, it's, it's so wonderful to make with you this Tikkun Chatot. To Daraba, thank you, Elias. Thank you, Ed. We will do a Shecheyanu for the year next week and some more celebrations spread out between now and Pesach. Until then, thank you for being here. Laila Tov to all the Israelis. Thank you for Shabbat all the shalom. Service. Have a wonderful rest of the day wherever you are. Shabbat Shalom Shabbat to shalom. everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Laila Tov. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.
Shabbat shalom, תודה לי אש, מאוד נהנינו. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. שבת שלום, תודה רבה. 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 תודה רבה.
start looking at some of your poets. Maybe we can invite you in someday to uh, to do the same thing. We would do it. No, we wouldn't do it on, on Shabbat. We'd do it another day. We, we will make it. We will make it. To believe, <laughs> to believe that uh, the corona will pass, pass away and we will make it. Let me close this. Elias, what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the meeting and I'll open it again and we'll come back and we'll talk about it for a few minutes. Okay? I'll open it and I'll come back so that you can come back and we'll be able to talk about it in the same way. Okay? Thank you very, very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.